Good morning. I'm Jordan Mead, and uh, I'm a county councillor from Gravesend in England. It is a pleasure to join you across the pond to be here in this great and beautiful city of Washington, D.C., and a privilege of a lifetime to be standing here at the National Press Club. On this anniversary of the Inflation Reduction Act, I today want to hammer home what this landmark legislation means from a British perspective and how and why the United States, along with her allies, must continue to assert leadership and influence in this important sphere. If we row back to the year of 1989, it was British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher, who in a significant address to the UN General Assembly, first warned of those dangers of climate change and why politicians from across the political divide should come together and place environmental protection and standards at the forefront of international policy setting. 35 years later, and on this anniversary, we should revisit Thatcher's foresight and uh, consider how and importantly why the Inflation Reduction Act should not only just be a shelved American policy, but instead should be and must become the pillar of global stability and influence, particularly as our shared values and that common inheritance of which Thatcher spoke are under attack from the savagery of rogue states and hostile regimes. From the importance of targeted fiscal measures that address both the symptoms and root causes of economic instability, to how the act harnesses and unlocks the power of market-based solutions to drive environmental progress. For Britain, for Europe, and indeed for the world, there are critical takeaways from this act, which I hope at least elements of will be integrated into our domestic policy uh, setting and our thinking in the future. Now I'm proud to be an elected member of Kent County Council, a local authority which over the last decade has made significant progress in environmental policies. We have since 2010 reduced our greenhouse gas emissions by some 83%. And from heating decarbonization, solar farms, uh, investment in heat pumps, uh, draft proofing our own buildings and schools, my colleagues across Kent are showing how local authorities are leading the way when it comes to tackling climate change. Kent has achieved success through raising challenges and indeed through having the desire in, and a commitment to placing people at the center uh, of these challenges. It is in this context that I'm now drawn to uh, recall how my county uh, has worked with local schools in our area to install solar panels, which in turn has saved our schools thousands of pounds for reinvestment into education, and how my colleagues are now importantly working on transforming the Kent Pension Fund by recognizing the important role that investors have to play in driving the transition to low carbon energy. Now, Kent is famously referred to as the Garden of England, and indeed 71% of our landscape is actively farmed. We have some of the most fertile soil uh, some of the best growing weather in the whole of Britain. And from our ancient woodlands to our chalk streams, to our old orchards, our beautiful vineyards, and our meadows, I want to highlight the importance of preserving these spaces. <coughs> when considering climate change, we often neglect the need of food security, and we must collectively do so much more in this space. We must protect our agricultural land, and assets from the bulldozers of destruction and development. But once this land is gone, it is gone forever. And with that goes our food security. And continuing on that topic of food security, I have visited Ukraine frequently since the Russia's illegal invasion, seeing firsthand the butchery and barbarism that the Russian state is inflicting on the Ukrainian people. Ukraine is the food basket of the world. And we must never lose sight of the fact that Ukraine's struggle is our struggle. Our struggle for freedom, 
our struggle for opportunity and our struggle for prosperity. All of these ideals for too long in the West we've taken for granted. I have been to schools in previously occupied towns across the Chernihiv region in Ukraine, where pictures of the Statue of Liberty now hang on the wall against pictures of Big Ben, because those are the ideals that Ukrainians cherish, and those are the ideals that we so desperately should be helping them to uphold. Through the UK Friends of Ukraine and elected officials to protect America, we will continue to highlight how Ukraine should and must be part of securing energy and food security in our world over the years ahead. We further need region to region cooperation when it comes to supporting Ukraine's future. And I'm again proud that Kent is leading the way in this charge and Kent is about to sign a historic landmark agreement with the Chernihiv Oblast in Ukraine. And I'm thrilled to say that central to that are clauses on sustainability and agricultural advancement. I will conclude by directly pleading to the people of the United States to never lose sight of your responsibility as the leader of our free world. On my visits to Ukraine, I have seen why the USA, hand in hand with Great Britain and her allies, must never forget that through collective strength, we can and will suppress evil. As Churchill once prophesied, the people of the United States must never, ever lose sight of those facts. And he famously said, in the days to come, British and American peoples will, for their own safety and for the good of all, walk together side by side in majesty, in justice, and in peace. And in the context of Ukraine, that duty for us to stand firm, to uphold those principles of freedom, democracy, and liberty must now be called on again. So whatever the outcome of your election in November, I pray that this great nation will keep alive and keep burning that flame of Lady Liberty and burn it brightly so that together we can strive for peace and prosperity in this ever troubled world.